This is Dr. Jonathan Hansen. I'm the president of World Ministries International. And I want to welcome you to the warning program. Wherever you're watching or listening, welcome. Frankly, this morning, early, I just returned from the nation of Israel. I was in Jerusalem, was in the Knesset, and met with not only Knesset parliamentarian leaders, but also uh, throughout the week, other types of leaders, including church leaders. So that's exciting. Later on, you'll be hearing that or watching it. Uh, go to my website, www.worldministries.org, and you can go ahead and uh, see those programs, those interviews, those people. Uh, Israel, fascinating place. Maybe one day you can go there because everybody needs to make a pilgrimage, I believe, to Jerusalem. It's a city that you'll never forget. It's talked about in scriptures all through the Bible. And I'll tell you what, all eyes are on Jerusalem to this very day. So, Ray, uh, welcome back to the Warning Program. Yeah, thank you, Jonathan. Always happy to be here and share some ideas that hopefully can make a meaningful difference. Okay, Ray Gebauer. <clears throat> He's a holistic, unlicensed doctor. He's... Uh, written 12 books, financial strategist, and we've done some programs in the past that I think you would find fascinating. Go on my website, www.worldministries.org, if you've never listened or watched them. So, Ray, today, you got a fascinating title. Do you want to give it? Yes, uh, the title for the day is Getting Off the Freeway of Slow Suicide. Getting off the freeway of slow suicide. Interesting. What are you talking about? Well, the Bible talks about the path of life. Yes. Unfortunately, the way the devil works, the enemy works, is deception. And uh, reprogramming our thinking, you know, not in alignment with God. So most people are sort of on a path of slow suicide and not really realizing that we've been faked out and they think they're doing a good thing. And, uh, you know, so I'm really concerned, particularly looking at the statistics, that, you know, 50,000 people died just yesterday and every day, on average, just between heart disease and cancer. 80% of the people have diabetes, you know, and all this is pretty much preventable, and people don't realize that they're, they're headed towards the cliff. They're on a freeway, speeding down the freeway in the wrong direction, and it's sort of like slow suicide, not realizing they're doing it to themselves. Okay, so now that title in and by itself is very broad. It can mean a number of things. It can mean you're eating wrong and killing yourself. It could mean a lot of things. It could mean uh, what doctors describe as psychosomatic diseases. Mm -hmm. That's your emotions, like stress. Or unforgiveness, bitterness, hatred, yes, fear. Exactly, all those things contribute. Uh, one of the books I wrote is the single cause and single cure for every health condition, and also forty ways to kill stress before it kills you. So I would say the ultimate and single cause of all health problems is stress overload. Not just stress. Stress can be healthy. Can make what well, doesn't kill you can make you stronger. But the stress overload, including that you know physical stress like you're in a car accident or psychological stress, uh, electromagnetic stress, um, chemical stress, uh, or stress from not getting enough of something you need, not enough sunlight, not enough sleep, not enough food or water. So today we're talking more, focusing, narrowing it a bit to areas like stress or fear. Yes, you have focus primarily on the emotional stress because we live in a society where, in contrast to what Paul said, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Most people do have that spirit of fear. You know, the programming has been altered so that we're concerned about all these things and over-concerned, and there is a place to be concerned and there's a place for fear. That is the beginning of wisdom, the fear of God, fear of consequences. Yeah, that's exactly what the Bible says. Yeah. The, uh, you know, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yeah. But it's the fear of I man is a snare. The fear of the Lord, we're talking about again, do you, do you take the Bible seriously? If you take it seriously, 
then you're not going to have this type of stress. You're not going to have the wrong type of fear. You're not going to have hatred if you fear the Lord properly. Yes, yeah. So one of the major factors and components that puts us on that path of slow suicide is stress overload and particularly related to the stress of fear. Okay. Uh, so that's what we need to address head on because most people are drowning in this uh, poison, poisonous sea <laughs> or ocean of anxiety and fear. And, you know, help somebody to read the verses, you know, fear not, you know, God's not giving us a spirit of fear. But, but once you're in quicksand, it's often hard to get out. You can't do it yourself. You need other people. And we need God, of course. Um, and, and so I'm going to share three different s strategies. Uh, one, this time, it will be a three-part series. But, uh, but I, I want to start with a, share an experience that happened just this morning. Uh, when I left my place, you know, it's uh, about a two-hour drive up here. Uh, I thought, well, when I'm about halfway, I'll stop and take a break and, and get some coffee. But when I was about one minute from my place, there was a McDonald's there. I thought, you know, I'm going to stop there and get it right now. And so I went in there, and um, uh, the person who served me was, was a cute teenager girl, and, and she was happy and cheerful. And... and uh, I noticed she had red hair. And I said, oh, I noticed you have red hair. And she says, oh, yeah, and it's natural. I said, well, do you, do you like your red hair? She says, well, not so much. I said, really? That sort of makes you special. I mean, why wouldn't you? She said, well, because the kids at school tease me. I said, are you kidding me? Stupid kids teasing you for your red hair? I mean, they tease you about anything. Because you're fat or you're too short. Says, don't let that bother you. I mean, that makes you sort of special. You got to appreciate the beauty that God gave you, and like yourself, and don't be influenced by their opinions. And uh, so I said, God bless you, and left. So it was just a few seconds. But so I'm wondering, how much impact did that conversation have? You know, scale from zero to ten. It might have been a one or two. It might have been nine or ten. That might have made a significant shift in her thinking. Because she looked, on the outside, she looked happy and cheerful and pretty, but she wasn't feeling good about herself. So she was living this stress that was induced by other people and fear that she wasn't good enough or, or pretty enough because of this bad input. You know, it goes right into, if we want to say, Philippians 4, 6 through 8. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You know, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are a good report, if there's any virtue, and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you have learnt and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. You know, I think Paul is a good example to talk on stress. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, amen. So when I was at McDonald's, this, this is the cup that I got my coffee in. <laughs> her name is Mackenzie. And, you know, so I'm praying for her. This would be a significant breakthrough for her. But it just made me more aware that no matter how happy people look, most people have a lot of stress. And I don't know, maybe she was even suicidal. I don't know how bad it was. And so I think often of uh, Proverbs 3.27, it says, Do not withhold good from those who deserve it within your power to act. And Paul in Galatians 6.10, he says, Whenever you have opportunity, do good. So I always look at every situation. Is there an opening here, an opportunity for me to do good? Because people are struggling. It may not be obvious. And you'll never know unless you take time and have a conversation, connect a bit, ask some questions, which is you know, exactly what I did. And that's consistent with the principle four dimensions of love. You got to care. You got to connect, which is what I did. And you know, commit to how I can maybe help and serve this, this little girl. And how can I create value? I create value by asking questions and discovering 
a concern, a problem, so I could shed some light into this dark place to make a difference for her. And so this is another example of, of anxiety and stress that she was getting from the outside. And so everyone has the different sources of stress. Some of self-induced, some is from, you know, it could be concerned about the government or, or just family members. So that's what I want to address today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you've just tuned in, you're watching, listening to the warning program. Uh, this is Dr. Jonathan Hans, and I have, again, Ray Gebauer, holistic, unlicensed doctor. Ray, continue. Now, to reinforce what I'm talking about, I brought my stethoscope with me <laughs> that I use every day to listen to my own heartbeat because it can really helps synchronize your heart and, and your brain. It's, it really helps reduce stress and relax, maybe even just for 30 seconds a day. And uh, some really major health benefits. And it reminds me of one of my favorite verses in Proverbs 4.23. It says, guard your heart diligently above all else, because from it flow the springs of life or issues of life. So we need to guard our heart because it's always under attack. Our heart is being poisoned, not just in the environment chemically, but emotionally by fear, because fear is being pushed on all of us. You know, you know, for your own safety, you need to wear the mask or whatever it is. But for whatever reason, there's way too much fear, and, and fear not, is a poison. We're not saying you have to wear the mask, not at all. Um, but that's what they're saying. The government's been saying that. The right, government's right, been right. lying. Yeah, well, the point is, there's many sources of fear and anxiety you, you, on top of what the government's doing. And the point I want to make is fear isn't just some emotion. It, it also can be a poison. And that contributes to us slowly committing suicide without realizing it. A person who's optimistic, who's living more by faith, expecting good in the future versus something bad, on the average, they live 10 years longer because they're living in faith versus fear. So fear, the way I like to define it, fear is the emotion that you have when you are anticipating some kind of pain. It's anticipation of pain. And so this is a natural, automatic emotion that comes. We can't control that. If you anticipate pain is something that you don't want to deal with or can handle, we, we feel fear. Nothing wrong with feeling fear. Fear is actually a healthy, important emotion. It can save our lives. And even spiritually, you have to have fear of God. You know, Paul says, work out your salvation of fear and trembling. You know, perfecting holiness in the spirit of fear. So um, it has its place, but it's out of place when it's fear of what other people think and becomes controlling. So faith, in contrast to fear, anticipation of pain, faith for me is anticipation of gain, where we anticipate good things in the future. So when we look at the future, how do we see the future possibilities? We see mostly more problems and more pain, which creates more stress, which is what's hurting us, stress overload. Or do we look at the future from the lens of faith and we anticipate good, that God is good, Romans 8, 28. God's able to make all things work together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And so, so one of the, the, the first strategy in eliminating stress and reducing it and getting off that bad freeway that leads to slow suicide is we've got to decrease our fear and increase the faith. Uh, now, it's not so much reducing your, your fear as turning up the faith. It's sort of like light and darkness. If you want to get rid of the darkness, you don't fight the darkness. That's a waste of time. You turn on the light because darkness is no match for the light. So if you turn on the light, the darkness goes away. So when you turn on the faith, the fear goes away. Yeah, uh, it's... Uh... Like eating too much of anything. If you, you know, fear is healthy unless you have too much of it. If you have too much of it, it's a lack of faith. And instead, you're depending on yourself. If you have too much food, you're a glutton. Too much anything, you destroy yourself. Too much fear, you fall apart. So fear is healthy, but not 
when you take it out of context. We need faith so that fear doesn't bother us. We put our trust in God. Sure, we realize it, but it doesn't control us. It doesn't uh, drown us to the point of we fall apart, right? Yeah, as important as fear is to, for survival, like Solomon said, you know, the fear of God is the fountain of life, but the fear of man is is a snare. And it, it, so when we're over-concerned about what people think, as if it really makes that much difference anyway, but even if it did, you know, so what? It doesn't affect us. No one's bleeding. There's no dead bodies. It's just, we have this illusion that if someone judges me, you know, then it's like I, I can't handle it. So I have to avoid it. So we're living in this fear that we're poisoning ourselves, and which weakens our immune system. You're more likely to get cancer and heart disease and diabetes, you know, all these terrible things that, that we don't need and don't want, but we're bringing it on ourselves inadvertently. And so the first strategy, and I think the second strategy next time is even more important than this, but this is a good place to start, is you've got to focus on how to edify yourself, how to build up your faith. And part of that is, is well, the principle of love, you know, connecting with God, spending time with God, asking God to help you, help, ask God to help you have his perspective, renew, being transformed by the renewing of our mind, which includes you know, trusting in God more deeply, asking God to give you a, a, a stronger connection with him, abiding in him, trusting in him. Because if you're, if you're at a hundred percent trust level, that's the lights on at, at, at full, full blast, there's no room for darkness. And so the, the fastest way to extinguish the darkness of stress and fear, anxiety is you got to focus not on getting rid of the fear, but on increasing your faith. Time in the Word, you know, and praying, being around positive people of faith. And all that contributes towards your faith. When you, you hear people's testimonials, people are healed and people are delivered out of a terrible situation, it increases our faith. You know, 1 Peter 5, 6 through 8, summarizes what he's saying real well. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in faith, knowing that the same suffering are experienced by your brethren in the world. So if you let the devil destroy you because you are allowing fear to grip you instead of just giving it to God, I'll tell you, that summarizes it. It will destroy yeah. you, Ray. Yes. It's like slow suicide. Yeah, there you go. So I think we need to take stress and stress overload, prolonged stress, really much more seriously. We don't realize how dangerous it is. Dangerous it is. I think you're right. Yeah. A lot of, all of us, we let our stress level get too high, I believe. Yeah. And we need to realize stress is more than just feeling uncomfortable or inconvenient. It's a poison. And, folks, it's a sin. It's not trusting God. If you're fully trusting God, uh, you wouldn't be having the stress. Now, even Jesus himself, you know, when he was facing what was coming in the garden, he was stressed out. So he had anxiety, which was okay, but he was sweating blood. But he processed through it. He overcame that. He even said, Father, uh, is there a plan B possible here? <laughs> but not my will, but yours. So he submitted, but he, he spent time in prayer, and he was able to break through his stress. And that's how he did it, and we can follow that same example. Yes, and that, that's the only way we can do it, is by casting our cares on the Lord. Like you said, people don't realize Jesus, again, he came in a human body, was under so much stress, which you and I would be, we wouldn't have survived it, yeah. that he was sweating blood. Yeah. Sweating blood because of the stress he was under. Right? Yes. So we've, we've got... We can't just ignore stress. Well, that's just the way life is. Life is stressful. Well, life is stressful, but you don't have to be stressed out. 
And so when you find yourself stuck in that pattern, there's a good word for this in the Bible. It's called repentance. Repentance <laughs> means changing your mind. Yes. And your anxiety, Paul says, be anxious for nothing. So if you're anxious about something, you're already over the line and you're already sinning. Um, and so we, you got to repent. Repent means changing your thinking. We got to reprogram our mind. That's how we get transformed by the renewing of our mind. Hey, I got uh, three phrases. Listen to this. I've used stop thinking negatively, stop doubting God's word, stop stinking thinking. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yes. So I'm really, one of my favorite phrases is when you're too casual, you become a casualty. <laughs> yes. 